Do you love God? I do love God. Very much. Yes, I do. In the history of Christian theology, a large number of theologians have tried to address the question, what is theology? Faith-seeking understanding is one of the popular definitions of theology. However, theology should not be only about understanding, but also about practicing what we understand. Here, one of the fundamental tools for doing theology comes in, raising questions for critical reflection that is necessary for practice. I would like to invite you to think about why asking good questions are more important than rushing to find ready-made answers in doing theology. Usually people would answer this question, do you love God, in two ways, yes or no? God. Yes. Yes, I do. No. However, this kind of answer does not give us that much theological insight how can we make this question more effective and theologically significant? We have to remember three characteristics of answers. First, answers are always provisional. Second, answers are always partial. And third, answers are always context-specific. It is important for us to remember these three characteristics of answers provisionality, partiality, and context specificity. St. Augustine changed a bad question to a good question about our love for God. He changed the question, do I love God, to what do I love when I love my God? This kind of good question invites us to think of two important theological themes. First, what constitutes love in our concrete life? Second, who is the God that we confess we love? What kind of God do we believe in and love? Is Jesus the answer? Yes, he is the answer. Yes, right? Just, I mean, not everyone's going to agree with that, but... You may have seen a bumper sticker that says, Jesus is the answer. Actually, before you respond to this question, you need to know what questions you have because whether Jesus is the answer or not would depend on what questions you have. Depends on the question. For example, if you have a question about the weather for tomorrow, Jesus cannot be the answer. Or if you have a question about whether or not you could win the lottery, Jesus cannot be the answer. If your question is about what it means to follow Jesus, Jesus offers us very important answers. In Matthew 25, for instance, there is a parable on the last judgment. In the parable, Jesus offers us the answers by showing us what matters the most in following Jesus' way. Jesus was a good questioner. He asked questions such as, Who do people say that I am? And then, Who do you say that I am? He talks about, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Interestingly, Jesus did not offer the final absolute answers. Perhaps Jesus wants us to work on our own answers. Uh, he's the epitome of love. We should all follow his example, and that's what I try to do. Following Jesus would mean to practice hospitality, caring, justice, and peace, and solidarity with the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. So we must think about what kind of question we have before we think about if Jesus is the answer. Do you love your neighbor? As myself. Absolutely, yeah. I do love my neighbor. You may wonder, are there good questions and bad questions? Yes, indeed. 
A bad question is a question that has only two kinds of answers, yes or no. It is a bad question simply because it does not invite us to think. On the other hand, a good question is a profound invitation to a world of thinking and ethical theological reflection. Jesus radicalizes the notion of neighbor love by saying, you must love not only your neighbor, but also your enemy as well. Here, the question, do you love your neighbor, is not a good question because, again, you have only two options for answers, yes or no. So you may have to think about a few questions before you respond to this question. Sometimes it's hard, but... Um... For instance, what does it mean to love myself when Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself? What about those who do not know how to love themselves? Can they love their neighbors when they do not love themselves? The other question we must think about is, who are our neighbors? That sometimes I might get a little out of source, but I love all my neighbors. And, uh, you know, uh, what Jesus said, love thy neighbor as you would yourself. So I believe that. Of course, there are close neighbors that we can easily recognize. But how about non-documented immigrant, sexual minorities, racial minorities, or people of different religion? Would we regard them as our neighbors? then what does it mean to love those neighbors and enemies as myself? What if I offer a shelter to a non-documented worker to practice my neighbor love, but the police arrest me because of my act of neighbor love? So it becomes clear that we cannot address the complexity of neighbor love by a simple question such as, do you love your neighbor as yourself? As we discussed, doing theology means not just understanding, but also practicing what we understand. In order to practice, we must first ask good questions for critical reflection. Hannah Arendt, a German Jewish philosopher who coined a well-known concept, the banality of evil, reminds us that evil is the absence of critical thinking which would mean, without being able to think critically, we all could commit to acts of evil, such as crime against humanity in the Nazi regime. Without critical reflection, our faith and theology could have no relevance in the world where all kinds of violence, injustice, discrimination, inequality, and exploitation destroy countless lives that God created. Therefore, I would say questions are more profound than answers. I would like to invite each and every one of you today to have a conversation with yourself, which is a beginning of critical thinking, and ask yourself what kind of good question I want to wrestle with in order to do theology and to practice my faith in my daily lives. You might ask, what do I love when I love my God?